Femoral shaft fracture treatment when it is different. Femoral shaft fractures can be simple or complex. I will discuss some of the types of complex fractures of the femoral shaft. These are some examples of complex fractures of the femoral shaft. Ipsilateral femoral neck and shaft fracture, periprosthetic fractures, pathological femur fractures, and atypical fracture. In a patient with a high energy comminuted femur shaft fracture, suspect a femoral neck fracture. It may be present up to 5% of the time, and it can be missed up to 30% of the time. CT scan, thin cuts, may detect the neck fracture before surgery. When you see a comminuted mid-shaft fracture, check the hip for a fracture because of the potential complication of AVN, male union, and non-union. Make sure you give priority in the treatment for the femoral neck fracture. The femoral neck fracture must have an anatomic reduction, open or close, and a stable fixation, usually with the screws. Most of the femoral neck fractures are basically cervical, vertical, and non-displaced. Early diagnosis can be difficult due to failure to take good quality x-rays for the hip. Because the hip is externally rotated from the fractured femur, then the fracture could be hidden. Internally rotate the hip to better view the femoral neck fracture. Get x-rays of the hip before, during, and after fixation of the femur fracture. The fracture must be reduced anatomic and fixed with the screws or compression hip screws. Focus on the neck to gain anatomic reduction. The open reduction can be done by Watson-Jones approach or by limited Smith-Peterson approach. Timing of discovery of the femoral neck fracture may decide the available options for treatment. If the patient complains of hip pain after I am riding off the femur, then get x-rays of the hip to rule out a hip fracture. Postoperative 15 degree of internal rotation of the hip before the patient walks, you may discover the hip fracture. If the fracture of the femoral neck is found, then fix it by adding screws around the rod. The fracture femur shaft can be fixed next with a retrograde nail or with a plate. Do not use one device to fix both fractures. You may have a malalignment of one of the two fractures. The incidence of evascular necrosis in this type of fractured neck is approximately 5%. Another area of interest is the periprosthetic femur fracture. Vancouver classification is very popular and it is A, B, and C. It relies on the level of the fracture and if the prosthesis is stable or not and on the quality of the bone. A. Proximal femur trochanteric area is involved. B. Fracture occurs at or near the distal tip of the hip prosthesis. C. The fracture femur occurs below the hip prosthesis. So the treatment of Vancouver C is RIF with a plate. The plate will extend proximally two canal diameter above the tip of the femoral prosthesis. The B has three types. In the B1, the fracture at or near the tip of the stem, and the stem is stable. You will do open reduction and internal fixation with a long, anatomically contoured, locking femoral plate. The screws may go around the stem, or you may use unicortical locking screws, 
or you may use cables adjacent to the femoral stem. Because the stem is stable, you're gonna keep the implant. You're not gonna change the implant. In the B2 fracture, the stem is loose. And you know that because the patient may have pain before the fracture or the stem subsided after the injury. You're gonna revise the implant using long stem cementless prosthesis. So when we talk about B3, you will have loose stem and the bone proximally is of poor quality or has severely comminuted fracture. The treatment is revision of the femoral component with proximal femoral allograft or proximal femoral replacement. Another type is pathological fracture. When you see a fracture that looks like pathological fracture, be aware of the fact that there are five areas in the body that can metastasize to the bone. These are thyroid, breast, lung, kidney, and prostate. So you want to see that patient, you want to get a good history and physical, you want to get some lab tests, you want to get complete blood count. You want to get metabolic panel to assist the renal and hepatic function. Get urine analysis. You want to get disease specific test. For example, PSA for the prostate, S peep and U peep for multiple myeloma. You want to image the entire bone. You will get chest x ray. CD scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. You will get bony scan and the skeletal survey if you suspect multiple myeloma. When you talk about the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, 85% is specific for finding a primary site of carcinoma. By doing all this, you probably will find a primary and that could be metastatic. However, if there is no history of cancer, or if there is a history of a prior non-metastatic cancer, or if the x-rays are concerning for sarcoma, then you probably need to do a biopsy. If the fracture is in a metastatic lesion in a patient with a known cancer and no other metastasis shows up on bone scan, you may need to biopsy this lesion because it can be a different primary lesion or it can be the only metastatic lesion. You got to think, am I going to do the biopsy or send that to a center that can deal with that? And when you fix this metastatic tumor, just remember that the lung does not heal very well, that the kidney may bleed a lot. If the metastasis appear blastic, then it's probably prostate or breast. For metastatic lesions, you probably need to give the patient biphosphonate. Another fracture is the atypical fracture. This atypical fracture is biphosphonate-related fracture. This fracture usually occur in the subtrochanteric region. Usually the fracture occurs after a low energy trauma. There will be lateral cortical thickening. It is a transverse fracture in orientation. There is a medial spike and there is lack of comminution. A simple transverse fracture with cortex hypertrophy could be pathognomonic. The patient will complain of symptoms before the fracture occurs. Stop the biphosphonate and give the patient different drug. This may prevent the fracture. If the patient is in biphosphonate for four or more years and has pain in the thigh, get an x-ray of the femur. If you see cortical thickening, then get an MRI to rule out this stress fracture. Check vitamin D and calcium levels. 
The treatment of this fracture is anti-grade intramedullary nail of the femur. There is an increased risk of atrogenic fracture with intramedullary nailing for biphosphonate-related fracture because of the thickened and brittle cortices and could be an increased risk of non-union. Although the biphosphonate prevents a lot of fractures, this atypical proximal femur fracture is associated with the long-term biphosphonate use. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.